Hello and welcome to episode 76 of the Pixel Street Podcast. My name is Joel Campos and as always I am joined with the man who is in possession of all of the uh, Popeye's chicken sandwiches, Connor Cop. All of them. You can't have any of them. They're all mine. I've decided. Uh, I will not be dispersing them to anybody. I mean, yeah, that's why there's such a shortage, because you bought them all. Literally every single one. Nobody can have any of them. I, I refuse. Uh, do not call me for a lawsuit, Popeyes. I don't actually have them, but I do. He does. He robbed the truck. Uh, fast or What is it? Not Fast and Furious. Oh, yeah, Fast and Furious. I was thinking... I was thinking Need for Speed. I thought I was saying Need for Speed, but thinking that, whatever. You can find the Pixel Street I mean, podcast on most podcast platforms on Fridays, as well as on YouTube. Uh, you can now watch the show directly on our Facebook group by searching for Pixel Street Podcast over there. Uh, we enjoy having new people follow our content, and we hope to keep you around. With that in mind, we have decided to run another giveaway. Uh, once we reach 100 followers on our Twitter account by searching for us there, at Pixel Street Pod on Twitter. Um... Yeah, let's get into it. This week we're going to be discussing our Gears Five impressions. Uh, I'm sure we'll. I'm sure next week will kind of be our review because I'm sure John will want to get in on that. But we're just going to talk about what we think of the game so far, of what we've played. Um, we're going to talk about some rumored Sony events. Uh, one we already know about, being the Naughty Dog one, and another one that's rumored to be coming. Um, and con- uh, the Control DLC. Uh, it may have some sort of crossover with Alan Wake which I know people are really excited about. Um, But with that, let's get into some new releases we're excited about coming in the next week here. Um, This is where we just scroll through the list and (laughs) kind of say anything that jumps out, whether it actually looks good or if it just looks dumb. It has a dumb name. I I will say worth mentioning here, uh, it's not a whole lot of stuff from the looks of it, but the uh, open beta for uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare uh, kicks off, I think, next week. Uh, this weekend. This, this weekend. Week. This weekend. Wow. No kidding. Uh, Thursday, September twelfth. Wait. This says Thursday, September twelfth to Friday, September thirteenth. I'm sure it starts at twelfth. Yeah, I think it's a few weekends worth. So I, I think it's like this weekend and then also the following weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Right on. So there's that if you're looking to try it out. Um, also you got Borderlands three coming out uh, on Friday. Uh, Friday, September thirteenth. So. I know there's a lot of people looking forward to that. I'm kind, I kind of am. Uh, the my buddy who I game share with bought it. I've never been too into Borderlands. I recently played through the first one, um, but I never played through number two. So, yeah, I'm kind of of the same mindset. Like I, I've played some of the Borderlands, and they're okay. They're just not for me. I don't think that there's anything wrong with them. But I know John is super, super stoked. Uh, he's got a whole crew that he's planning on playing through the whole thing. Yeah, well, I mean, so. John's dead to us because he's not here this week, right? That's fair. That's fair. John doesn't exist. He's a figment of our imagination. So, I mean, I think it's safe to say John thinks Borderlands 3 is a bad game because he's not here to defend himself. That's, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, tweet at him. Tweet at him and tell him that he's wrong. You heard it here first, folks. You heard it here first. And then uh, you also got Damon X Machina, which I thought was out a long time ago, but apparently not. You know what? I I actually have the opposite viewpoint on this one. I thought it was going to be a long time before we saw this game, and apparently not uh, for that as well. Maybe I'm for some reason. Maybe I'm thinking like, didn't we first hear about it like two E threes ago, like last summer? I don't think so. No, I think we caught it uh, this past one. Um, but I I think if if I remember right, there's a game that resembles it pretty heavily. Uh, and I think that might be what you're thinking about. Could be. Uh, because it's got like a similar name, it's stylized, similar, but I don't think it's a mech game like Machina is. doesn't say. All robots, there's probably metal in both. That's probably where I got the idea from. Both games I probably will never play. <laughs> um, Yeah, I don't know. Any other uh, NASCAR Heat 4, which apparently they're re-grand- rebranding the NASCAR name. I didn't know about that. I always thought that they were still. Yeah, they've been doing these NASCAR heats for a little while now. Did they and... did they change it because they weren't coming out every year? Because I know they used to be. Yearly, I don't know. And like it used to be That's, like NASCAR yeah, right. 06, 07. Yeah, I think they stopped that. I I want to say one of the last one of those was Inside Line, maybe. Um, I, to be honest, I'm not super up on my NASCAR culture, <laughs> so. <laughs> but yeah, either way, I think that um, having it have a name like NASCAR Heat 4 makes a lot more sense because I feel like that's a very niche market. 
the Venn diagram between gamers and NASCAR fans, I don't think is very large, but what do I know? <clears throat> but I mean, in this way, they can take a year off if they need to, um, without, you know, ruining the name at all, I guess. That's fair. I mean, there's certainly a crowd for those games. I see a lot of people come in uh, looking specifically uh, for NASCAR uh, in my store. But uh, in fact, I, I actually just had a guy buy one of the original 360s uh, like two weeks ago. No hard drive, no nothing. And he bought it just for NASCAR and then came in like two days later and bought all of the NASCAR games <laughs> that I had in stock. And that was it. I wonder if any of those NASCAR games are like hard to get. Because I know like NCAA football, I forget which ones, but they're hard to find. And so if you do find them, they're actually pretty expensive, like hundreds of dollars. Yeah, NCAA football 14 uh, was the last one they made. And last time I checked, I think GameStop sells it for $60 yeah, on the like, 360. That's bizarre, man. <laughs> People love their college football, man. I Everybody's mean, yeah. into that. I mean, there must be a market. I'm sure there is. Um, but yeah, moving on, other EA games, you got NHL 20 coming this weekend. I tend to wait until they come to Game Pass before I play them, but um, who knows, maybe I'll win one in one of these Twitter giveaways I'm seeing all the time for EA Sports games. <laughs> um, Friday, you also have Star Wars Pinball. Uh, not entirely sure what that is. Um, but yeah, that's hey. pretty much it. I don't know, what do we got? Sorry. I'm stopping. Yeah, I mean, we're still a few yeah. weeks out from the really, really heavy hitters. Castle Crash is uh, remastered. September 20th. September 17th. Oh, yeah. I've heard that's a really good one. Yeah. Oh, um, Dead by Daylight, the Stranger Things DLC. That, I think, is going to be pretty yes. cool. I want to try that out. I still got to play with and you John's and John. pretty stoked. Yeah, we, uh, man, I've been trying to find time for video games because there's a lot of them right now. Oh, I know. We'll get to that in a little bit, though. All right, what were you going to say? September 20th. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, September 20th, you got the Switch Lite launch, as well as uh, Link's Awakening remaster. Uh, what about that um, Fortnite Special Edition Xbox Wireless Controller, September 17th? Ooh. You got I, I got to say that, uh, that purple's pretty sexy, but uh, the Fortnite turns me off. <laughs> oh, shit, we have Sega Genesis Mini. How much is that retailing for? 80 bucks? Ooh. Some ridiculous, I'm sure. Yeah, 80 I mean, okay. I have all the That's others, gross. so I'll probably get this once it goes down to like 30 I wonder if they put the full roster out for that, because I know they were holding it pretty close to their I mean, chest it, there for a if while. If it comes out next week, I imagine they did. I actually think they did. That's I'm fair. I'm trying to look for Love it, but I don't look see Look into it. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nothing too yeah, crazy. They, did. they announced them in waves. Um, mm. Yeah, there's a bunch. Road Rash 2, Tetris, doo -doo -doo, Earthworm Jim, Go Ghouls and Ghosts. So, yeah, a bunch of games there on that. Sega Genesis Mini. Um, yeah, and then you got some dirty ass amiibo coming out, and then Link's Awakening. <laughs> uh, next week, but um, yeah, that wraps up the new releases. Um, coming out in the next week. Uh, I'll go ahead and take the games with gold, and then we can go from there. You can take the other ones. Uh, games with gold for the month. Sure. Uh, until September fifteenth, you can get Forza Motorsport six on your Xbox One. Um, September 1st through 30th, you can get Hitman, the complete first season, which I still have to download. I've not done that yet. I hear really good things about the Hitman series. I don't think I've ever played one though. Um, you can also get in, uh, from September 16th coming up next week until October 15th. You can get, we were here on the Xbox one. Not sure what that is. Uh, September 1st until the 15th. So you have a few more days. If you're listening to this, the Friday, this podcast airs. You can pick up Earth Defense Force 2025. I've never been a fan of those games. I reviewed one a while ago for the Vita. It was not my cup of tea. <laughs> I gave it a shot, though. I played it a bunch. It was all right. I mean, it was interesting, but I don't know. I'm not... Too, it, it's too bare bones for me. It seems like a game that's not finished, in my opinion. But I don't know how those uh, console versions hold up. Uh, and then you can also get from September 16th until September 30th, Tekken Tag Tournament 2, which I know a lot of people love those Tekken games. Those tag tournaments are fantastic, too. Definitely one worth picking up. Are there any, uh, uh, moving on. Are there any Game Pass games? <clears throat> Go ahead. New Game Pass games? So nothing new, really. Um, all of the ones that we're hitting at the beginning of this month that they announced have already hit uh, by the time we air here. But I did want to make a mention of a few titles that are actually leaving at the end of the month. And that's the Lego Indiana Jones, Shantae Half-Genie Hero, Split Second, Ninja Gaiden Black, 
and The Hunter Call of the Wild, all leaving on the 30th. Uh, so if you're playing those, you better hurry up or buy them. Uh, as remember, you do get discounts on anything uh, that is part of Game Pass if you have Game Pass, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but I will say that obviously Gears 5 is on Game Pass. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. But another one I wanted to make mention of uh, is that uh, Blair Witch game is also on Game Pass. I think it hit on the first, and I've heard some pretty good things about that one. So yeah, I, I've um, heard some mixed reactions about it, but I think the overall consensus is that it's like it's an all right game uh, for like, yeah. especially for Game Pass the day it came out. Like, come on. And I heard it's only yeah, about. Yeah, I mean that's the great thing about it heard... is that like you're not spending money up front to buy these games. You're just getting it as a rotation. Yeah, I heard that it's about four to five hours to beat one playthrough, but I think that there are multiple, I don't know, endings or scenarios that can happen. I'm not sure. But I know I was watching a buddy stream it, and he said that he was going to go back and play it again. So there must have been something there that he wanted to see. I know that you can pet the dog. Ooh, that's a... Isn't that a Twitter account? <laughs> it's the only thing that matters Is there a anymore. Twitter account for that? Uh, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a Twitter account. And actually, funny enough, on the topic of petting dogs... Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 just released an update a few days ago uh, that allows you to pet the dog in there. So, Well, there you have it. This has been the the podcast within a podcast about dog petting and video games. <laughs> um, it's important, man. It's important. Uh, PlayStation Plus, what do we got? Uh, so for September of 2019, you have Batman, Arkham Knight, and Darksiders 3, which are both amazing games, uh, I think. Is a general consensus. They're pretty good, so definitely pick those up. Even if you don't plan on playing them now, you might want to play them in the future. So, yeah, grab those. And what do we got for Twitch Prime, Connor? So on Twitch Prime, you've got a chance to score yourself Wonder Boy, The Dragon's Trap, Pumped BMX Pro, Mabel in the Wood, and Automa Chef. Uh, and also, we're going to keep reminding you, uh, up until it ends, which is here in the next couple weeks, so you can stop hearing us talk about it, uh, but if you have Twitch Prime, you can get 12 months free of Nintendo Online as well. And it does stack on uh, non-family accounts. So you can kind of stock up on that uh, online service, especially with those SNES games hitting. Uh, it's a good, good time to get in on that deal while you still can. That lasts until September 24th. Uh, it seems to be is your last chance to do that. Do it. Do it. Hop on that. Um, yeah, so with that, let's get into kind of what we've been playing. Uh, the game that's on both of our lists, um, let's just get right into it, because this is the only game I've played since last week, is Gears 5. Oh man, this game is really good. Real, real good. Have you beaten the story? Sorry, I was listening to a yes. dog bark, I was making sure it wasn't my roommates. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, yeah, I actually just beat it today, uh, a few hours ago. Before jumping how, on, how here. many so uh, how many hours did it take you? It. Uh, I haven't looked, um, but it it was longer than Gears Four. I felt oh, like oh yeah. Um, so there is a little bit more playtime there. Probably, if I had to guess, like maybe 10, 12 hours. Okay, because like I I literally did everything in the game, all the side stuff, and oh no, kidding. it took over twenty. I started Friday night when I got home from work. I played for maybe two and a half, three hours. I got almost done with Act 1. And then Act 2 <laughs> and 3 are real open, and there's a lot to do there if you're trying to do all the yes. side stuff. And it's not necessarily a lot to do. I think it's just because of how big that area is. And so it, right. take, it takes a lot of it, uh, time to traverse yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So I think that that's what adds to the time pretty drastically. Did you get the achievement for beating the game? Uh, that's a good question. I don't remember one popping, yeah. so I might have to check that. Because I think that, I think I read online, uh, on Reddit, that they're, the tracking for that game is totally fucked right now. Because the game, even if you play single player, relies on their multiplayer servers. So you could still get huh. kicked from your own single player campaign, which happened to me multiple times when I was playing through this weekend. Um... Yeah, this game's had a lot of struggles uh, for its first week or so. I mean, the servers have been really, really having a bad time, uh, both multiplayer-wise and uh, just trying to get a campaign game going. I know I was playing with John and one of our other friends uh, in a... the the So the campaign is actually three-player, uh, which is super weird. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I was really hoping for another four-player uh, style game, but uh, ended up being three-player where... Uh, two people play as a gear, and then one person plays as the robot, Jack. 
Uh, so it's got some interesting dynamics there. But we were trying to start a playthrough when the game had dropped, and we just kept having issue after issue. I mean, we had the checkpoint glitch where uh, it would literally just be uh, saving your progress infinitely uh, and not let you continue. Yep. We would have spots where enemies didn't spawn. Uh, it was a it was a rough week, but when the game works, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. Um, <clears throat> I think that if in, I mean they will make a Gear Six, uh, when they do, I think they need to steer away from this uh, all online thing because that I think that's where most of the problems stemmed from. Is that even if you were playing single player, it was still technically on their servers. Because they needed you to be able to just hit invite to a friend if you want to play co-op on the spot. So I Yeah, it's kind of the crappy <clears throat> trade-off you get with features like that, uh, where, you know, we're still not in that perfect connected internet world yet where everything works 100% of the time. So uh, it's kind of like damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. Um... As far as those features <clears throat> go. So. Sorry. I gotta ask, uh, without spoiling it, because I, I definitely don't want to talk about it, but... Um, what did you Le think left or of right? the big twist? Left or right? Yes, yes, left I, or right. So the one I selected was right. Okay. Did, is that what you did? Uh, originally, I, I went left, and then I had to replay it so that I could go right. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I, I wanted to see both options and, and kind of decide what, uh, what happened. Uh, but boy, was I not expecting that. Oh, yeah, I know. And it really makes it interesting to see how the next game is going to play out. I Like, I don't know... Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, I can't really say anything without ruining it, but I don't know how the next game's going to play right. out. I think next week we should do a spoiler cast with John. I'm sure if he hasn't beaten it, he will by then. Most likely, yeah. I, I would love to because I would love to chat about that because it was so, like, you you make a choice and you, you don't even have time to process it. Like, it just has to happen. And it, it doesn't, like, build you up for this choice or anything. Yeah. It just occurs and comes out of it's nowhere. It's something that has never come in a Gears game before, so you're completely blindsided. Yes. This being the it's, sixth game, technically, in the franchise. Right. Like, you do not expect this coming. And it was a great moment overall, because I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, it definitely left me feeling more impacted than any other kind of happening in the Gears game since. Uh, is it, it didn't kind of mince around it. It didn't kind of tiptoe... Uh, around the decision like you just had to make it very quickly and then you had to deal with the consequences of your choices and it, it was just a very interesting thing to see as far as like what they're going to do in the future um i i've heard a, a few different theories on like because like w one of the one of the choices essentially has to be canon uh for it uh to continue in like gear six or whatever uh is it is a pretty monumental decision and i've heard that Either they they already have it decided on what it is and just gave you the choice for whatever purpose. Um, but I've also heard that maybe they're going to go by like a voting system and just take the majority of players, what they picked, and choose that as the canon answer uh, and build Gear 6 off of that. So uh, some interesting stuff there. Uh, I'm super excited for other people to get to there because I think that uh, this choice was pretty effective in, in what they were trying to do with it. So... Um, Overall, fantastic game. I really loved it. The open world sections were, were nuts. Did you find any of the relic weapons? No, I don't think I did. Really? So, do, do you know what the relic weapons are? No, I I, just, I think I saw something because I was like Googling collectibles and stuff um, after, sure, after so I beat it. And I saw something about relic weapons and I don't think I ever found any of They those. are awesome. They're fantastic. So, basically, like throughout the world... And throughout the game, there's different uh, kind of like secret areas. And they're usually, if, if you remember back in like years one and two, you would see the um, the cog symbol with the skull. So like the Gears logo uh, painted on a wall. Yeah. And that usually denoted a cog tag. And I did see one. I was looking around for a collectible and I was like, there's nothing here. <laughs> and so I just So left. in this game, it seems like it's tied to the relic weapons. And the relic weapons are, uh, there's only, I, I don't know how many there are in the game, but there's only one of each relic weapon in the game. And basically what they are is weapons that you can get that are relics, uh, like old versions or stylized versions of guns in the game that have some kind of special ability. So, for instance, uh, the first one I think you can come across is the long shot relic weapon. And if you get the long shot relic weapon, if you hit an active reload, and I think all of their abilities are tied to their active reload for the most part, 
Um, but if you hit the active reload, it chambers two bullets and allows you to fire twice without reloading. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Which is fantastic for the long shot, because we know the reload time on that is forever. Yep, it's terrible. Um, one of my favorite guns in the game, the Claw. I don't know if you played with that very much. It's like a light machine gun. That one, if you active reload with it, uh, it takes away like the misfire, and it shoots much, much faster. There's a Marksa. Uh, that turns into full auto. That's the uh, uh, like DMR style gun. There's a ton of them. They're all fantastic. Uh, it is a bit of a bummer that you can't take them all with you. And it, I don't know if there's any achievements or anything that are tied to it. Like you said, the tracking's kind of crap right now. So yeah, could be that uh, maybe it just didn't pop. But uh, they're pretty sick. Yeah, the tracking like in the main menu, you can hit start and go to stats. And one of the stats, there's three sections. One is multiplayer. One's campaign. And one is horde or something i can't remember exactly but either way like the campaign one when it loads it's supposed to tell you how long you played the campaign total and like your completion percentage and for me mm -hmm. right now it says my completion is like 43 percent or 44 percent complete and that i've only played for like four and a half hours weird yeah so it's all screwed up and i know it took me like it i know it took me like at least 20 hours just because the time I put in Friday night and then the time I put in all day Sunday playing. It's a long game. Yeah, it's it's not a short one by any means. Yeah, it's pretty long. But yeah, I think that we'll probably get into a spoiler cast next week about it. We'll put a big warning ahead of the time. Um, Maybe that make that the topic of the show just at the end of the show. Yeah, yeah, we could probably do that. Uh, but Connor, you have one so. other game on your list to talk about yeah i've got one that uh i picked up it just released i think on tuesday so brand new release uh i don't have a ton of time in it as i was trying to get gears 5 all said and done but it is uh greedfall which is the latest game from spiders uh the guys behind technomancer and a few other titles um they seem to be kind of like relatively B tier studio yeah, uh, I, I, for the I, most part. I think they're pretty average at making these types of games. Yeah, they're not like a triple A or anything, but they're certainly not an indie studio uh by any means. Um so yeah I picked this game up, jumped into it. The premise of this one is seems to be kind of set around uh, uh colonialism uh, a little bit. So uh everything has a very like piratey and colony look. Um, the premise is that you are playing as kind of a bodyguard for your cousin who is to become the new, like, governor of a brand new territory that your people have stumbled upon, uh, and you're set to sail out uh, to this island um, that has kind of an, an indigenous population there. Uh, I'm not super far into it at all. Uh, I've probably played maybe an hour uh, tops. Um, reason I, I jumped onto it is it looks and kind of reminds me of a little bit of like Fable or um, kind of that Mass Effect-y RPG, uh, which I've heard some decent things about it in early reviews. So jumped into it. The character customization seems okay. It's not super, super in-depth. The menus aren't super in-depth. Uh, I will mention that the HDR implementation seems to be broken in this game, so I actually had to turn HDR off uh, in order to get the game to look right on my television, so your your experience may vary a little bit there. But... Uh, yeah, it's it's um it's pretty in depth as far as its combat systems go. Uh, you've got like a light attack, heavy attack, uh, but there's all kinds of different weapons. Uh, it's got a fluid class system in it where you can kind of mold and shape perks and abilities uh, in in whatever way you want. Um, and the the whole shtick of the game is that uh, effectively you can tackle objectives uh, any way that you want. So there's generally like multiple angles of attack. So for instance, like uh, I just stumbled across my first mission of this type and uh, somebody's caught hostage in a warehouse and you need to go rescue them. Now you can just uh, brute force your way through the front door, fight all the bandits that have this person hostage <clears throat> and take them all out that way. But obviously you risk using up a lot of your potions and stuff uh, as well as maybe falling in combat. Your other option is you can sneak around them uh, if you've got a good enough sneak stat uh, you can blow a hole in the wall uh, if you want to go around the back way. Uh, or you can lockpick your way through things uh, and get in that way if your lockpick skill is high enough. So it's got some measures of choice in there. 
again, I'm not super far into this. Um, I will say that my big complaint right now is that the game's controls, as far as like character movement go, are not smooth at all. Uh, it's definitely uh, an outdated system. I feel like I'm playing a game on my 360 almost, where uh, movement is not very fluid. Uh, it's uh, kind of registers input after you let go of a stick. So like when you move your camera, after you let go of your camera stick, it'll still kind of shift the camera a little bit, which I'm not into. I don't know if that's just a stylistic choice or what it is. Um, but it's an interesting one so far. I, I like some of the writing that it's got in it. And the combat is actually far better than I expected it to be, uh, especially after um, dealing with that weird movement system that they have. So I'll probably talk about it more in the future. I don't want to get too in-depth with it. It's like I said, I'm not terribly far in. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll be talking about it soon. Yeah, you see, I didn't know this was made by the same people that made the Technomancer. Um, I played some of the Technomancer, and that game was super clunky, like you were saying, in terms of the movement. It felt almost like I was playing KOTOR. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to hear what you have to say about it in the future, because the person I game share with bought this game because he was stoked about it. He did just get surgery on his shoulder, so he's been kind of stuck at home for a few weeks now oh bummer but um yeah i'm excited to see what you have to say do you think this game how long do you think this game takes to beat do you think it's one of those like 80 plus hour ones uh so the early estimates that i've heard is that it seems to be an rpg that's not as long as uh kind of a traditional rpg so uh i think it's clocking in at about like 30 hours mainline okay uh completion i'm gonna take a look at uh how long to beat here to see if there's any stats up for it uh, I don't expect there to be, but, um, yeah, I, Technomancer is one that I always wanted to check out and I kind of liked the, the stylistic, uh, kind of approach that they had to it as it all seemed pretty cool, but I uh, never got a chance to check it out. And this one, um, just happened to pick up on a whim. Uh, yeah, looks like, uh, Greedfall's not even on how long to beat as far as, uh, uh, nobody's reported how long it took them to get through it. So uh, some will have to check back on. Like I said, it, it seems like some of those estimates are saying that it's not terribly long, so I don't expect to spend a ton of time with it. I have heard that it kind of deals with some really heavy issues around the colonialism stuff and that it fumbles those quite poorly. So uh, we'll see where it goes. I'll uh, I'll definitely let you know what I think. All right. Sounds good. Uh, we're trying to speed up the podcast a bit this week just because we're kind of strapped for time here. We had some computer issues, so we're running a little bit out of time. So we're just going to go into the news now. Um, yeah, like I said, I've only played Gears in the past week, and Connor, I'm assuming these are the two games that took up your time. So um, yeah. let's uh, just get right into some news articles. First one we got comes from Kotaku. Uh, the headline reads, Final Fantasy VII Remake continues to look like a brand new game. This article comes from Jason Schreier. Uh, he says, Blink and you'll miss some of the brand new additions to Final Fantasy VII for the remake, as showcased in the new trailer that Square Enix put out in honor of the Tokyo Game Show this week. That was, I think this new trailer released this morning, uh, 9-11. Um, among other things, there's a new boss fight with Reno, some sort of dart minigame, a brand new member of Soldier, a bike sequence with the NPC members of Avalanche, QTE pull-ups, um, I think that yeah, quick time event pull-ups, a President Shinra hologram, and summons for Ifrit and Shiva, uh, both of whom are obtained way after Midgar in the original version of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, this remake, uh, the first installment in what will be a larger series, takes place entirely in Midgar. Um, yeah, so it's exciting to see that they're doing a lot more than people were expecting with this remake. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to check out this footage quite yet, uh, as it just dropped today and I was trying to plow through Gears. But um, no, I, I agree. After being able to play it uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I think that they're really going for Final Fantasy reimagined, uh, almost, so, more so than a remaster. Okay, so so you think that this is doing more than, say, the Resident Evil 2 remake did? Absolutely. Yeah, I think that they're kind of uh, experimenting with this, seeing how this goes. And not only that, I think a lot of this is kind of maybe to fuel some of their future Final Fantasy stuff is 
Uh, this combat system seems to be more akin to a 15, but with some changes and stuff. So, yeah, I, I think this is more of an overhaul of 7 rather than a uh, true-to-heart remaster. Uh, yeah, that's it's really interesting to see because, uh, you know, I used to love Final Fantasy 7 back in the day, even though most of the time I probably didn't know what the fuck I was doing because I was, like, 10 years old. But, um, yeah, I'm excited to try the new one out. I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, this next article we have comes from Game Informer. Andrew Reiner writes, Control may cross over with Ellen Wake and upcoming DLC. Um, fans have been asking Remedy Games to bring back Ellen Wake, and that may be happening, just not as its own game. Uh, Remedy today announced a content roadmap for its latest game, Control, and the latest item teased is a paid expansion called AWE. Uh, and with it, uh, within it, we see a familiar flashlight along with the letters A and W, uh, which stands for, you know what, Alan Wake. Uh, according to Remedy, AWE explores a new section of the oldest house called the Investigation Sector. Here, Jesse will be tasked to examine and interact with altered world events. Uh, nice try in hiding Alan Wake there, Remedy, but we clearly see what you are doing with the A and W. So as somebody who has played Control... Uh, how do you feel about this? They hint to the world of Alan Wake very, very heavily. Uh, and they, they really don't, like, turn it into an Easter egg or anything. Uh, it is very, like, front-heavy in uh, some of the objects you find, some of the documents you find. And there's even uh, one of the items that you find uh, is, like, a, a typed piece of paper. And once you come across it, you actually hear audio of Alan Wake speaking, uh, and, it, and it, like the, I, I always play with my subtitles on, and the subtitles even say Alan Wake as the <laughs> person who's speaking. That's so, pretty great. Uh, they haven't really shied around this uh, at all, and I think for me, this seems to be them just being genuinely excited about having the rights back for Alan Wake, as you remember they bought him back a, a few weeks ago or so. Um, so it seems like they they plan on kind of bringing it into the fold, but. Uh, the thing that kind of surprised me here is that they are really going for it. Um, you know, it, it's not kind of like a just, oh, hey, this is also in the same universe, but this seems to be a direct tie-in with Alan Wake. So I wonder if maybe these are meant to be part of the same story now instead of just in-universe together yes. or how that's going to shake so out. So you think they might just go full-on into it instead of just kind of teasing it? And that's what it kind of seems like. Eh? They're leaning into it pretty heavily in the game and... Uh, you know, like I said, it seems like they're pretty stoked to have the rights back. I wonder if this maybe leads to a new Alan Wake game, or maybe Control is an Alan Wake game, and they just haven't said it yet. Yeah, could be. It'd be I think it's. I love stuff like this in games, because um, it keeps people like questioning what's happening, what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I I like that it's it's seeming at least like it's more than just an Easter egg at this point. Or Easter eggs, because I know that there's a few in control. Um, how do you feel about the fact that the first expansion is a timed exclusive release for PS4? Oh, man. Uh, I've got some real strong feelings on this one. We originally heard about this back when the game was announced, yeah. uh, with it having some sort of exclusivity here. Uh, this just plain sucks. Uh, it's, it's not a good feeling for anybody involved. Like, you know... If you've got a PlayStation, like, sure, you could be like, oh, I, I get it first, blah, 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 blah. But realistically, I mean, it, it's just kind of the same BS that's been perpetuating the console war stuff for so long. Uh, and it's kind of one of the things that keeps us away from cross-play and things like that. Uh, and it's just very frustrating. Like, uh, you know, to each his own, whatever. I'm, I'm sure Remedy probably got a big payment of money from Sony to uh, to make this a reality. But... Um, for me, it just sucks. It's just really stupid. Even if it, uh, I was on the other side of the coin, um, I will be honest, I, I'm more of an Xbox player myself, uh, so it really sucks for me. But even if I was on the opposite side of the coin, I don't think I'd be very happy as this stuff is just archaic at this point and I think really unnecessary. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing if it's like, <clears throat> I don't know, a weapon in Destiny 2 or... Um, you know, I know Call of Duty does partnership deals with DLC maps, but the fact that this is right. story related, that is really shitty because I know you being a fan of the game, uh, you're not going to go through your Twitter account and block everything that says control. 
So what's stopping somebody from, you know, tweeting something from the game and you seeing it? Which for me, I saw a huge spoiler from Gears 5, which is kind of what we were talking about earlier. I saw that spoiler somewhat to an extent. I didn't, I'm not going to get into it, but I saw a huge spoiler for the game just scrolling through Twitter. And right after that, I was like, all right, well, fuck, I can't look at Twitter until I beat the game. No, I agree. And as a developer, you know, one of the last things that you should be doing is making part of your fan base feel bad for choosing to buy your game somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and it's just such a bad PR move. Like, I understand that the backlash traditionally for things like this uh, hits uh, kind of the developer and the platform uh, pretty equally. Uh, and it's usually used as a, like, laughing point for the people that are given the upper hand here so um you know sony players may kind of laugh in the face of everybody else and be like oh we got a first blah 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 blah. but really it's just frustrating because again i mean if you turn the tables here everybody's just not having a good time and that really sucks yeah it's really unfortunate me personally as somebody who is i have not played control and never played ellen wake um at least you i think everybody gets expansion two at the same time I believe so. So yeah. I mean, at least there's that, which is probably the one that everybody's more excited about, at least for now, until we find out more information. Um, but yeah, either way, it's not it's not a good thing at all. Um, but yeah, uh, let's get into our last news article, Connor. If you want to take it. Sure. So uh, this one is just a quick article here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, um, as it's mostly based around some rumors and stuff. So. I'll just dive into those, but there was a rumor that popped up recently that suggests that Naughty Dog is going to be hosting a media event uh, for Last of Us Part 2 later this month, um, which, to be honest, I think lines up pretty fantastically with the fact that I just got to see some exclusive gameplay of it a few weeks ago uh, that they haven't showed anybody else. It seems like they're at the point where they're ready to start talking about it and maybe even start showcasing the game, so... Uh, that I, I totally believe could be true, but in addition to that, um, there has been a uh, prominent leaker uh, in the commu- uh, community that's come forward. It's uh, Zhuge EX, who has leaked tons and tons of information in the past. Uh, he's leaked games, he's leaked console names. I mean, uh, this is about as reliable as it gets uh, when it comes to the leak community. And he has said that... Um, For that event, so for the uh, Last of Us 2 event that's going to happen later this month, that it's not even the only Sony event that week, uh, which is pretty interesting as well. So um, some cool stuff there. I'm really excited to see them come forward and kind of chat both about Last of Us 2 and uh, whatever else they have planned. As Sony seems to have been pretty quiet uh, for the past couple months. I know that we had a, um, uh, what, what do they call their... Uh, Sony directs the uh, PlayStation Experience. No, that's that's no. a thing. Yeah, <clears throat> I, it's so forgettable. I, I I don't even remember what they called they them. They all just blend um, in now. They really do, and it's it's unfortunate. Granted, we have only had like two of them, I think, at this point. So it's not like we've had anything crazy uh, from them. But um, yeah, I mean, Last of Us. Like I said, I I think that. It's a very easy bet to say that we're going to see more uh, at the end of the month for this game. Um, But I'm more interested on uh, this other event uh, that this guy says is going to happen. uh, Because when I think about it, I'm not even sure what it could be uh, realistically. Do you have any thoughts? Um, No. Uh, Yeah, I have no idea. I think it could be another one of those PlayStation live streams. Maybe they somehow tied in with this. Like they just haven't announced it yet. Um, that could be. I was trying to think of like what else they could talk about or or go forward with. Yeah, I don't know. All I can think is that they elaborate more on Last of Us Two or uh, Death Stranding, but we already know a lot about it, and we're getting a huge Death Stranding um, gameplay video this week at Tokyo. Yeah, it's forty nine minutes at the Tokyo Game Show that uh, Kojima is showing. Absolutely massive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we'll know in a few weeks here, which is pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, in other news, which if this podcast is aired, you probably know about, is you've probably seen that um, Death Stranding video and that new Nintendo Switch ring thing. Switch ring? Yeah, did, have you seen that? 
No, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. They came out with a video last week. It didn't say exactly what it is, but they said that the reveal video is going to be tomorrow, uh, September 12th, 2019. Are you talking about that weird, almost fitness (coughs) reveal peripheral? Yeah, yeah. It's like the shape of a ring and like it shows them playing with it in like a group of people, but it looks like it's like a workout tool of some sort. It's very Yeah, I caught a little bit of that and I really don't know what to make of it. Uh, Nintendo's got such a weird history of just strange peripherals, and this seems to be that. I honestly, I'm surprised they haven't just like made a new Wii Fit type thing, like just essentially what they had before, but Wii Fit. But then again, I don't know how successful or unsuccessful the last one was. I mean, those boards are everywhere now. They probably make up a good ten percent of every landfill in the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that that's all we got for news. Um, look forward to hearing what we have to say about, you know, all the stuff coming, you know, at the end of this week and at the end of the month. Um, this has been episode 76 of the Pixel Street Podcast. As always, tweet at us at Pixel Street Pod any topics you might have for our topic of the show segment. We skipped it this week because we are strapped for time. Um, email us, pixelstreetpodcast at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook by searching for Pixel Street Podcast there. Uh, my name is Joel Campos. You can find me on Twitter at Campo 63 Mixer, Mixer.com slash Campo 63 Connor, where can we find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at the real Birch. Uh, that's Birch with no I. I'm um, also on Mixer at uh, Birch, again with no I. Uh, find me on either or. I stream from time to time. John and I have done a couple streams in the past. You can join us there uh, and have a good time with us. Um, yeah, that's that's where I'm at if you care to watch me ramble about stuff all right and john where can we find you nowhere all right stay tuned next week (laughs) for episode 77 of the pixel street podcast where we will have impressions on gears 5 some more elaborate ones goodbye bye